I've come to a church in Exeter where everything you thought you knew about video games is being turned on its head. St Stephen's Church is gearing up for something they've never done before. Trying to bring some of the entertainment usually reserved for home within the four walls of the church. As usual, the Reverend Sheila Swarbrick will be holding communion. But at the same time, parishioners will be encouraged to let their hair down and participate in the service by playing a video game projected on a large screen behind the altar. Like lots of parents, I've got concerns about video games, how much they cost, the moral message, and the level of violence that some of them have got in them. So I'm intrigued to find out how video games can be used to spread a bit of joy and even enhance faith. Gaming expert and Christian Andy Robertson is the brains behind this venture. He says gaming is misunderstood and is more than just entertainment. Now, when I think about video games, I think about that they're addictive, that they're violent. I don't think that those are particularly good for my soul. Any media in and of itself isn't good or bad. It's about the context we play it in. So rather than just thinking, oh, games are addictive and I need to stop them, seeing them as a part of, you know, how, how young people cope with the world sometimes, and so sometimes they soothe other parts of their life by playing a game. You're sort of trailblazing something here. What's the response been like? Well, I think, actually, I found the church is really receptive to this idea. Some priests might not be sure about people playing video games in church. So I want to know how the Reverend Sheila will feel during her service later. Sheila, has the church here ever done like anything like this before? Not at all, no. <laughs> this is very much a first experience. What are you hoping for? I think I'm hoping that people will, as they come to worship, will also be led perhaps into new ways as well, new visual experience, new understanding. Do you think it's going to be well received? I do know one or two people who are not coming, you know, who very much said, oh, this isn't for them. Some people might argue that this building is not a place for frivolity like video games. But it's not necessarily frivolity. Visual arts have been part of church life. In the Old Testament times, they would have had visual stuff. And is this another way of the sense of the mysterious? But Andy is prepared for a mixed reception. Some people love it and they're just like, wow. But equally, some people say, oh, it's a bit distracting or I find it hard to concentrate. And I suppose there's got to be a willingness to just go with it, yeah? Yeah, none of us know how this is going to turn out. Um, and that's what's so exciting about it. I've spent the last few minutes in a pair of underwater diver's shoes. Well, flippers, to be more accurate. And I think I might be starting to get the hang of it. Well, almost. Oh, man, where am I going? No. Oh, do you know my teenager, if he was here, would be dismayed. <laughs> the game follows the journey of a diver exploring a dying ocean while setting about restoring life through magical springs. It's been chosen to tie in with today's service, which features the biblical story of Jonah, who was thrown off a boat and swallowed by a whale before turning back to God. I mean, it is a lot of fun. What's it doing for my soul? You have to kind of be looking for it, I guess. In the same way, you could walk into a church, couldn't you, and just think it's a nice building and, and then leave. If we spend time here, what I find is that actually there's more to it. It's, it's quite tranquil, it's quite moving in a way. I quite like doing those backflips. <laughs> yeah. People coming today will take it in turns to pass around the game controller during the service. The idea is that by the end, everyone will have had a go and contributed to the story. But as the parishioners arrive, there are mixed feelings about what lies in store. Have you played video games before? No. I'm not techie at all. I don't, don't do anything like that. Are you Absolutely an expert not. gamer? 
No, I have no, I, I have no experience and no interest. Do you know what? I'm going to talk to you at the end and see if you're like a complete convert to the world of video games. If you're out there That's buying a PS4. Extremely unlikely. <laughs> oh, God moves in mysterious ways. It sounds like this could be a challenging service for Sheila. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion, this service where we have this video game going at the same time. As the service gets underway, I'm struck by just how integral the video game is to the proceedings. When the controller is passed to me, I could see how the joy created by playing the game was adding to the service. I'm really glad it's my turn. Just like any regular service, candles are lit, hymns are sung, all set against this extraordinary juxtaposition of traditional church and a giant video game screen. May God bless our journey with the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And until we meet again, May God hold us in the palm of his hand. Thank you so much for coming. As the service drew to a close, I caught up with a few of the parishioners. And for some, this modern technology actually provided a connection to the past. It must be the closest to the medieval church experience you could get, because in a medieval yeah. church, most people wouldn't read. The walls would be covered with graphic images, and so you have big visuals. So most people going there would see the visual. So it's a kind of similar thing where you're taken along. Was yeah. it your first go on one of those? Yes. What's yes. that? Now I can be down with the grandkids, so that's all good. And I, I also think for, um, you know, in terms of young people and children coming into the church, this would be just such a draw. I don't think you can have a faith on just one level, one flat plane. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger than that, multi-dimensional, isn't it? And that's opening that up. You're speaking my language now. <laughs> you were doing lovely somersaults, yeah. having a bit of a ballet yeah, thing going really on. therapeutic. <laughs> just came round and round. <laughs> Got lost in it. I wouldn't have thought I can actually think about God whilst watching this and doing it. With reactions like that, it's no wonder Andy's happy. You've got some real converts. It was a real immersive experience. Um, and just those wonderful... Oh! A shark! Sorry. <laughs> I got very excited then. There was a shark. I was very excited. All these people have had a really good chance to engage with that and start their journey with video games. So that's quite exciting. For the Reverend Sheila, though, a novel experience. She feels using video games this way has pros and cons. So do you think it added to your worship? It added, but it could also be a distraction, and I think there was always that, that slight difficulty. Yeah, it's good to go to different places and experience things, experience other worship. But would I do it again? I probably would, yes. And so it's always good to try something new, it is. isn't it? What I've seen has really opened my eyes to the use of technology, and gaming in particular, to really connect with people and have a bit of fun. What happened here tonight was we were brought together by a video game. And you know, if playing a video game in church brings you closer to God, then that can't be a bad thing. <laughs>